This week, I hit the jackpot at the restaurant surplus and salvage grocery store. Come with me, and I'll show you what I'm doing with it. As most of you know, my hubby and I are living in our camper in a campground just outside of St. Louis. He was transferred by his job about four years ago. We sold our big house in town and started downsizing and found that we could live a lot easier without all the junk. We just found that life was much simpler without all of the responsibilities of keeping up with your stuff. Now, even though we sold our big house, we do still have a farm and a farmhouse on nine acres down in South Central Missouri. I explained in an earlier video called Why We Are Rewinding, the things that caused us not to be able to have this farm six years ago and why we had to leave it. But we're ready to return to the farm and try to become more self-sustainable. I have always had a yearning to live sustainably on a farm with our own animals, raising our own food. Now, after six years, I have found all kinds of resources that we didn't have before. And we're slowly gathering up things that we know we're going to need for the homestead. Things we know about from experience and things we know about now from what we've learned. As I go to the grocery store and see one empty shelf after another, I know that the calling for sustainability was put in my heart on purpose. One of the reasons I started this YouTube channel was to show you that you don't have to have a big space or even know how to garden to gather and preserve. And that's what this video is all about. So guys, how do you like my new apron? My new fall apron. I know it's not quite fall yet, but everyone that knows me knows fall is my favorite time of the year. And I was so excited to wear it and show it off to you. Just in case you're wondering, Paletta over at Favorite Things Gifts made this apron and I purchased it from her and I plan on purchasing several others too. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below in the comments. Last week I went to Bars, the salvage and surplus restaurant grocery store that's in Gray Summit just outside of St. Louis. I encourage everyone to look around and see if you can find one of these kind of stores because there really is some good deals. This last time that I went, I was able to get all kinds of veggies. Big bag of already shredded carrots. And the great thing about that is I don't even have to shred them up. I can put them straight in the dehydrator and put them in jars and use them for soups later on. I also got some cabbage. This is actually a cold saw mix. And you can tell it's from a restaurant. It's what the restaurants use. It's pretty good quality, very fresh. I gave $2.99 for this bag. You can't hardly buy a head of cabbage and then you have to bring it home and chop it up. By the way, these uh, carrots were $1.99 for that whole bag of, sh of shredded carrots. Also, my favorite thing that I found that I have never seen in there before is comes in boxes just like this. And it's herbs. Herbs, guys. Fresh herbs. And you can see this is oregano. I bought these for a dollar a box. Okay, and I also got some mint for a dollar a box. The mint, there was quite a bit more mint than there was oregano in a box. And I brought them home, and I want to tell you that when I got home, I did not have time. It was Friday, and Saturday is my day to do the activities at the campground here. So Saturdays are always a really busy day for me. But I want to tell you what I did. My daughter, is she works a lot, and she tries to find ways for her to feed her family in a healthy way. So she orders from Food Fresh or one of these companies that have everything chopped up for you and the recipes to show you how to go. And when they ship her boxes to her, they come with these gel filled packages, which are fantastic. If you know somebody that's getting uh, meals, prepared meals that way, they will have these. And you, if they don't need them, go ahead and grab some. I put this in the freezer and it freezes up. And then whenever I have vegetables like this, of course I am in my camper, you know, and my space is limited. So with, even meats I do this with. But when I have vegetables like this, I just take that out of the freezer. I make sure when I freeze it that it's flat. But I take it out of the freezer and wrap it in a towel. That way it's not directly against my cabbage and freezing it. 
and put it in a cooler outside until I have time to work everything up. I just want to pass that little thing along with you. Look for these if you can find them. I got mine for free. I love them. She gave me probably seven or eight of them so I can rotate them out and recycle them. So that's how I'm gathering and preserving food. You know I have the camper garden out there, but we both know that there's no way near I could plant enough out there to preserve, even make it worth the time of preserving um, some things I have, especially my herbs. And I will when my tomatoes start ripening up, can those actually. And there will be a video coming up about that as soon as I get some ripe tomatoes. My tomatoes are moving slower than most everybody else's, but I planted them later and they don't get full sunshine here. Whether that makes a difference or not, I don't know. I'm testing that theory out to see how much sunshine you don't have to have on your tomato plants. I know, I have the craziest experiments. Okay, once all I get, once all this mint dries, and these paper bags work really, really good for that. Once all the mint dries, I'll crunch it all up and I'll put it in jars. Now for the, my very favorite trick that Heidi from Rain Country has taught me. Earlier on, uh, she talked about these gadgets. And these are actually four canning jars. You can get the wide mouth and the regular mouth. And they come with the seal of meal. Um, Heidi warned against the seal of meal because she's had to replace her so many times. And she lives mostly off grid. She only has solar power. So she tries to find ways to can and preserve without having to have electricity. This little gadget is what, it's called a brake bleeder. And I'm not really sure what they do with it when it comes to brakes, but I absolutely love what it does whenever you're preserving your dried foods in jars. She sent me down to Harbor Freight, uh, told me the, where to get it, and that was at Harbor Freight, and I bought this for less than $20. I know it was less than $20. But this, this right here is the broccoli. I don't know if I left a picture or if I put it in a video at some point of dehydrating my broccoli. But anyway, that big bag of broccoli that I bought for $1.99, this is it. Yes, all that broccoli fit in this little jar. That makes it great for camper life. I can set it up here on my shelf or whatever and have broccoli all the time. I want to tell you also, uh oh, there's a wreck on I-44. Campground is just off of the interstate here, so we get to hear a lot of sirens. Something I'm not going to miss when I go home. I want you to know that I did actually use some of this broccoli, and you can't even tell. There's barely any taken out of the jar because, like I said, it shrinks down so much you don't want to pour this whole thing in your recipe because you will have more broccoli than you really want. And I did do a beef and broccoli recipe that I used this in. It was very good and it was even Jay approved, hubby approved. <laughs> I didn't seal this up yet because I'm still using it, but all you have to do is seal it back up again and it's really not that comp complicated at all. So what you do is you just, you take the ring off. You don't want that ring on there. I always keep trying to do that. But you pop that, it's for the smaller mouth, so you pop that over there. Then you take this in. This is how the brake bleeder, it came with this hose and this little attachment and several more attachments too. Um, I haven't even really looked at them because I found this one, it worked great. But you attach that on there and then you take the tip and put it here. And you, you have to hold it firmly, but not hard, it's, it's not hard. And you want to wait until you've got your jars all the way full because if you don't have your jars all the way full, there's a lot of pumping and I tried it the first time and actually it will work your muscles out. It actually made this muscle right here hurt for a couple of weeks. But anyway, you just take and pump that up. Just You're holding it firmly and you pump this up until that gauge reaches just over 15 pounds. Heidi says she always goes a couple over, so that's what I'm doing too. Sometimes she said you can hear it pop. I don't always hear it pop. Take that off and you can see it's sealed. And I'm just gonna put the ring on it. Now, I mean, I can use this again, 
right now I'm not going to be needing to use dried broccoli because there's so much fresh around and especially while I'm up here at close to bars where I can get fresh broccoli almost any time up there and so I will put that on the shelf and save it for this winter maybe if I run out of broccoli and don't and can't go in the grocery store this is what we are preparing for these are some onions that I done, red onions. I got them in a the great big bag for $1.99. Actually, I think they were $1.25. Big old bag of red onions, and you can see I dried them out on the dehydrator. This jar is not real full, and it's a bigger jar, so it's probably going to take a little bit more to get this one pump, pumped up past 15. But I'm gonna use my, oops, see, I forgot again take the ring off. I'm going to use my big attachment. Put that in there. Pump it up to 15 pounds. Okay, now you can see this one's taking a little bit longer to get up to the 15 mark. So, tell you what, you get your exercise in your forearm with that. And you just bring it all the way up until it hits 15, just over 15, which is at the top of the gauge, so it's easy to see. I'm always nervous, but it's sealed. And those onions will keep for a long, long time, a lot longer than if you didn't seal that lid. I don't know from experience how long they will keep, but as soon as I've kept them lo as long as I can, I'll let you know. Could be several years down the road. I'm doing this with my breadcrumbs. Okay, I already have this one sealed up, um, but this is the Orzo that I bought for 50 cents a package at bars. I got a ton of those packages, and then when I got them home, I'm like, oh, I hope they don't go bad, and then I seen Heidi's video, and that's where I am. I've got some packages in the freezer right now, but I still have a ton more of them, so I went ahead and put them in a jar and vacuum sealed it. There's a lot of orzo in that jar. It will take forever for us to use that up. We use it kind of like rice sometimes. Then I had the great big giant package of mushrooms, just plain old restaurant mushrooms. I, I dehydrated them on my dehydrator. I had to ask, I had to actually message Heidi the other day and ask her because they weren't crunchy when I took them out and I was worried that I hadn't got them dried enough. Um, but she assured me that mushrooms, when they're dried, always have a little bit of flexibility when they're dried with a dehydrator. And they're sealed up and ready. This is a huge bag, a great big bag of spinach. and. I dehydrated that up and then I put it in my food processor and chopped it up into smaller portions. It's not really a powder yet, more like tiny flakes, but I'm going to try and use that in like my meatloaves and my soups and stuff like that and see if we like it. And if we do, I'll be on the hunt for lots more spinach. Okay, that's my pretty neat trick that I learned from another YouTuber. These are the things that I didn't know before that I could have used the knowledge. And now that I have access to YouTube, it opens a whole new world for us when we return to our homestead. I've got a couple more videos in the tray ready to finalize and get set up to you. I am going to do one on how I make my banana nut bread because you know that's one way to preserve your bananas is to make banana nut bread and stick it in the freezer. Also, I've got to get out there and show you guys this jungle garden that I've got going on here at the camper. I know that a lot of you are following over from Facebook um, when I post my videos on Facebook, and I know that I can see in my analytics that you guys are watching my videos. Thank you so much for watching them. But I need subscribers right now, so if you want, the best way is to go into YouTube and do a YouTube search. And you have to have you have to have a Google account and you have to set up a YouTube account, but go into YouTube and search Homestead Rewind and then find my page and subscribe to it. And if you want to be notified of when I, exact moment when I upload a video, click the little notification bell and there are several different ways you can be notified. There are several different options there. That way if you don't want to be bothered all the time by them or whatever, you can adjust that. But anyway, I 
appreciate it if you guys would subscribe and also share share my videos with people that you think would be interested in the things that I'm doing here. I guess that's going to wrap it up for now. I hope you all are well. Until next time, love and peace to everyone.